And that is where we begin tonight. That Trump rally at New York's Madison Square Garden that wasn't just reminiscent of the pro-Nazi rally held there in 1939, it actively mirrored that event right down to Trump's white supremacist ghoul, Stephen Miller, echoing Nazi rhetoric in his speech. America is for Americans and Americans only. That's great-grandson of Jewish immigrants Stephen Miller echoing the words of that night in 1939 that promised to restore America to the true Americans, in case you had any doubts about that being full blood and soil talk from Miller. Of course, they tried to cloak the fascism of it all by rolling out a litany of MAGA losers and celebrity has-beens like Dr. Phil who used his minute to whine about DEI, but only has a career after being offered West Texas white man DEI from Oprah Winfrey. And disgraced and disbarred former America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani, who claimed that Palestinian toddlers are murderers, while accusing Democrats of being on the side of terrorists in Israel's war in Gaza. And if you don't think they know fully or knew fully what they were doing, one speaker, radio host Sid Rosenberg, said the quiet part out loud. I get back and they go, Sid, you want to speak at this MSG thing? I go, sure. Out of character for me to speak at a Nazi rally. I was just in Israel, but I took the gig. I will again remind you that Stephen Miller paraphrased literal American supporters of Adolf Hitler at this rally. This is not a joke. And yet people like that offered the meat of the MAGA closing argument last night in an event that careened from disturbing to the entirely absurd. Trump lawyer Alina Haba, who's lost every case she's put up for him, dancing her way to the stage in a bedazzled MAGA jacket to all I do is win. And wrestler Hulk Hogan having a wardrobe malfunction of sorts on his signature move, followed by a litany of speakers unloading a stream of racism, unabashed misogyny, demonizing immigrants, LGBTQ folks, and Vice President Harris. The whole party, a bunch of degenerates, low lives, two haters and low lives. Every one of them. She's a fake, a fraud, she's a pretender. Her and her pimp handlers will destroy our country. In fact, she is the devil who ever screamed that out. She is the Antichrist because she's just so impressive. As the first Samoan Malaysian low IQ former California prosecutor ever to be elected president. I'm not just MAGA, I'm dark Gothic MAGA. And I'll be damned if you're going to have some school tell my boys that they can now be girls. I have just one question for Florida Congressman Byron Donald, since you have thoughts about what you will or will not be told what to do or what not to do. How about being brought on stage immediately after a speaker who used this music in his introduction? Oh, I wish I were. In case you can't quite make that out, that's Elvis Presley's take on Dixieland. Look away, look away, look away. All that old-time racism nostalgia. Benny Hoops, the moment that really set the tone for the entire night, came right at the start from comedian and podcaster Tony Hinchcliffe. And these Latinos, they love making babies, too. Just know that. They do. They do. There's no pulling out. They don't do that. They come inside, just like they did to our country. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. The Trump campaign now says his remarks, which were vetted by the campaign and loaded into the prompter, do not reflect the views of Donald Trump or the campaign. 
But if that were the case, I mean, none of the next 28 or so speakers pushed back before Trump took the stage. And Trump himself used the same kind of racist and dehumanizing language that he always does, vowing that what he calls an invasion of immigrants will end the day he takes the oath of office. And then he fell back on his inflammatory and dangerous comments about Democrats as the enemy within. We're running against something far bigger than Joe or Kamala and far more powerful than them, which is a massive, vicious, crooked, radical left machine that runs today's Democrat Party. They're smart and they're vicious, and we have to defeat them. And when I say the enemy from within, the other side goes crazy, becomes a sound of, oh, how can he say? No, they've done very bad things to this country. They are indeed the enemy from within. And, but this is who we're fighting. That is the kind of rhetoric that, along with his former chief of staff, General John Kelly, and former Joint Chiefs Chair General Mark Milley, saying he's a fascist and would rule like a dictator, that should be a screaming front-page headline in every newspaper in the country, looking at you, Washington Post. Well, this weekend, the New York Times finally did its part to not comply in advance in a big way. Blasting on the front page of its Sunday opinion page, Donald Trump says he will prosecute his enemies, order mass deportations, use soldiers against citizens, abandon allies, play politics with disasters. Writing that these statements are so outrageous and outlandish, so openly in conflict with the norms and values of American democracy, that many find them hard to regard as anything but empty bluster. We have two words for American voters. Believe him. This is in stark contrast to Kamala Harris, who today weighed in on the fallout from the racist rhetoric at Trump's MSG rally. I think last night Donald Trump's uh, event in Madison Square Garden really highlighted a point that I've been making throughout this campaign. Uh, he is focused and actually fixated on his grievances, on himself, and on dividing our country. And it is not in any way something that will strengthen the American family, the American worker. It is absolutely something that is intended to and is fanning the fuel of trying to divide our country. So while Trump was in reliably blue New York without any of the seven Republican New York congressional candidates in competitive House races standing alongside him, Harris was continuing to do the groundwork for both her campaign and her party, marking her 20th visit to Pennsylvania this year by going to a Puerto Rican restaurant and releasing a detailed plan to implement her vision of an opportunity economy in Puerto Rico, which includes new investments in education, bringing child tax credits to Puerto Rican families, and strengthening the island's energy grid. Puerto Rico is home to some of the most talented, innovative, and ambitious people in our nation. And Puerto Ricans deserve a president who sees and invests in that strength. The contrast could not be any clearer. Innovative, ambitious people or floating island of garbage. The Trump campaign's attempt to rebound from Trump's embarrassing critique of Detroit while in Detroit by degenerating Puerto Rico while in a state boasting the second largest concentration of Puerto Ricans is weird and puzzling, but also consequential. Any real New Yorker knows the city is synonymous with Caribbean culture, and almost immediately after comedian Tony Hinchcliffe's whatever you want to call what we saw last night, the islands and the world's biggest talents, including Mark Anthony, Jennifer Lopez, Ricky Martin, and Bad Bunny, responded by endorsing Vice President Harris, a potentially massive signal to a voting bloc Trump targeted by courting a reggaeton artist he later misgendered. Joining me now is Luis Miranda, Jr., community activist and author of Relentless, My Story of the Latino Spirit That is Transforming America. Mr. Miranda, thank you so much for being here. I just want to get your top-of-the-mind comments uh, and reactions to that rally that took place uh, in New York yesterday, including that now infamous um, comedy routine about Puerto Rico. It, it's so Trump. Uh, and so Trump's friends. Uh, Puerto Ricans were not new to this. 
in 2017 uh, when Hurricane uh, Maria hit Puerto Rico and devastated the island. He went to the island to throw paper towel rolls to us. He then withheld the aid that Congress had appropriated to help Puerto Rico for a long time and said that we were lazy and we wanted everything done to us. So it's not surprising that from lazy we moved to garbage. Uh, there's, there's, there's just a step uh, between the two. And, and, and we hear a lot, but he didn't say it, but he did. It's your home. It's your political event. The people who speak at that political event are doing your closing arguments, and they're doing it from various perspectives. That's what a political event is. So the fact that this guy was allowed to say what he said about Puerto Ricans and Latinos and Jews, and it, 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 it was equal opportunity uh, attacks. Uh, we're, we're talking about Puerto Ricans, but it's typical Trump. Uh, it's always a place where we all get our sharing of insults.